Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of JNAI Vlog. So today we're going to be talking about Grok 4. So that's right, you heard it right. It's meant to be the smartest model that's ever been released, which is extremely amazing. So one thing obviously to mention is the thinking process for Grok 4, which achieves new state of art performance on Arc AGI 2 dataset at 15.9%. And this is actually insanely good. Looking at the performance, Grok 4 is right here. I pretty much out of the box beats every other single models out there. Uh, the closest that we have is Cloud Opus 4, uh, which sits at in between uh, 8 to 10%. So we're maybe talking about 9%. That's the best so far. Uh, but Grok 4, it's achieving 16 plus percent performance, which is really amazing. And if you haven't heard of that data set, the website is here called Humanity's Last Exam. Uh, it's essentially a benchmark data set that's composed with 2,500 challenging questions across over hundreds of subjects. And uh, it pretty much involves math, history, physics, chemistry, and that sort of thing. So that's about the high level pitch of the performance and the news. Now let's dive into the API docs. So this is the console login for API access. Number one step is to acquire your API key. Uh, I believe you do have to pull your credit card in here. So this is definitely behind the paywall. Uh, that's how you create API key here after you enter credit card number, which I did. And I have my API key. The next thing is to go to the model. The latest available model version is Grok 4 0709. I believe that stands for July 9th. That's the date that it came out, which is great. That's going to be the one that we're going to use. And in terms of pricing, uh, obviously, it's Quite expensive. The input is $3 per million token, output is $15 per million token. So obviously keep your API key safe, right? I will not release this baby on the internet because once people hit on this crazy, uh, you're going to get charged a lot of money. The context window is 256k, which is nice. And that's all we need to know. Now let's dive into the code. So right in the beginning, we talk about API call. Here is a curl, that means client URL. Uh, of course, you can also go to Python or JavaScript, things like that. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use Python, and I'm going to take this, go to a Colab, see how we're doing. So that's the framework for Colab. I can use OpenAI package, which means I need to pip install OpenAI. Once I install OpenAI package, I get my XAI API key in there, and I'm good to go. Now let's make an invocation. Here, I use a Grok-3 version just as a starter. And after this API call, I'm going to try Grok-4. There you go. Let's see what the completion output is. That is the output. Great. We have a successful API call. Now, let's navigate here and let's use Grok-4-0709. And this did run. I believe the answer is much more complicated. I also think the consumption time is much longer. As a comparison, let's run this side by side, and then let's time it. That's going to be the first test to see how long each one takes. So I'm going to put Grok4 here, and then I'm going to print out the actual response. And on top of that, I am going to time this block of a cell as it's running. And I'm going to do the same with Grok3 as a comparison. So let's compare the outcome. The question goes, what is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? For Grok 3, it took about 5.3 seconds. And here's the response. It's a giant paragraph. I can, of course, read about it. Uh, it lists out a couple of different items, philosophical, philosophical perspective, religious perspective, so on and so forth. And for Grok 4, it took 13 seconds, which is a much longer. I would say this is at least twice more longer than before. And it gave out a similar answer. Here actually says 42, but uh, let me read the whole thing before I panic, right? Uh, the universe, the everything is 42, but wait, don't panic. That's just a numerical number. The book hilariously points out that we don't even know what the actual question is. I don't know what to say about this answer. Uh, it's actually very interesting to see this answer. Uh, you start by quoting this book, which is fine. Uh, my read to this answer is that it has a little bit of a sarcastic flavor, uh, but that's just me. I'll leave the final decision for the audience to see how this goes. And of course, right now, I'm just on a CPU, uh, so this time can take longer. But uh, if you're on GPU, of course, it will take faster. 
So now we have the API access from the previous episodes. We have been talking about agent and how to build scaffolding around the large language model so that you can have a genetic framework. So today we're going to take a little bit of a, a different direction. We're going to see how we can get this into a command line interface and allow us to talk to this large language model from just your terminal. So to do that, we need some sort of setup, right? Some sort of setup that's Python basic uh, that allows you to interact with this model and of course, assuming that you have an API key somewhere. So to do that, let's go to our terminal window. And I'm going to go to Document, Repos. I'm going to make a new directory called XAI Tutorial. Now I can CD into XAI Tutorial. And I can create a V1 version of what I'm about to do. Now I'm ready. I can open my VS Code. So now I'm in the directory that I want. Uh, first thing I need to do is create some sort of a setup. And I need to spell out the artifacts in there uh, to make sure that uh, it does exactly what I want. Uh, so the template is essentially the following. And don't worry, I will leave a GitHub link in the channel uh, so you guys can access it. Uh, this is a couple of packages that we're going to use. Of course, we're going to build upon LangChain. And uh, that requires LangChain OpenAI, requires LangChain community, things like that. Uh, so I think all these are good to go. Uh, in terms of name, I'm just going to say my own name. And that's going to be the foundational setup. Now, of course, in terms of description, I also need readme file. So I also need to create readme.markdown. And this is going to be left as a to-do. And we're going to fill in that blank. Now, another thing that we need to do is requirements.txt. Uh, this contains the list of packages that we need, which, of course, we need to specify a list of packages uh, that we have in a setup. Now, of course, you can maintain and manage everything here in UB or Poetry. But in this case, I'm doing everything from scratch. So you guys can all see what's going on. Once we have a setup file and we have all the packages, we can then get into the code. Uh, in terms of the code, I'm going to call it Brock CLI. That's going to be a folder. And in this folder, of course, there's going to be a couple of files. Let me create a folder, Brock CLI. And it's going to be the directory of where the main artifact lives. So now, inside of this folder, the first thing I need is some sort of init file. So what I'm going to do is create a new file called init.py. And that is essentially going to be left as a blank. The next thing I do is some sort of a genetic design. But I am going to simply call an agent uh, just to invoke one LLM as a framework. I'm not going to have two calling in here. But I'm going to design a class object in a way uh, that opens that door if I want it. So here, I'm going to call it agent.py. And I need the following packages. So first thing I need is all these imports. And then what I'm going to do is define a class object called grok agent. And uh, in here, what I need to do is uh, do something um, a little bit more clever and follow the framework. Uh, of course, I don't really want any of these junk here. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, code from scratch. So I'm going to say uh, init self. Uh, the one thing in there that we need first is API key. I'm going to specify model. Here, I'm going to do uh, type in string. And then I'm going to specify grok-4-0709. Uh, it's a new version, obviously. Um, the copilot hint it doesn't know what that is. Uh, and then the base URL is going to be just template. Uh, here, typing is also a string. And then we're going to say HTTPS API.x.ai v1. And this is the uh, same base URL as what we just showed you in the collab. So if you go to collab, that is the same base URL. Uh, so that's where I got that from. That is essentially the uh, and then I need a couple of things, right? I need the uh, LLM. This is the main LLM that allows me to invoke the model. So that's a self.llm. And we're just going to call open AI package. Uh, but the base URL is x.ai. Uh, so that knows where the model is coming from. Uh, now I need uh, just a basic tool set to get in there, self.composeio uh, tools. And that's it, uh, self.tools. Uh, allows me to get the tools in there if I need it to. Now I need a prompt template. This is just follow the conventional um, version from LangChain. Uh, so we're going to get a prompt in there. 
uh, and then this is kind of like a definition. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, define that downstream. Um, and the uh, uh, next thing after that is memory. So memory, I am going to put it up here as a self.memory. Uh, and after that, I have my main agent, just like that. And I have an uh, agent executor. Uh, so I have an agent executor here uh, just to call the agent for now. I haven't really talked about any tools. Uh, so this is just blank right now. Nothing's really happening. And I just want it to be uh, chat. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give this prompt a init and make that into the self. So it's a, a variable across this class object. And then after that, I am good to go. I can define the main chat method, and that finishes this class object. The one thing here is this prompt. Uh, here, actually, it needs to be uh, self.prompt. Great. Uh, so let's save this script. A uh, script is ready. Class object is well defined with all the initialization. Uh, chat is here, and we are good to go. Uh, now, of course, when we invoke it, we need the API key. Uh, we're going to talk about that just next step. So now let's invoke it. And when we invoke it, we are using CLI, right? We are using CLI. So we need some sort of a click command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new script called CLI.py. And then in here, I need to import everything that need to be imported, just like that. And this grok agent is coming from this agent script. And then the name is calling this grok agent class object, which is from the same directory. Uh, so that's what this line of code of import is doing from dot agent import grok agent. And that is the other script that we just talked about. Uh, and then I need a couple of decorators. Uh, I need command. And then I need API key dev, things like that. Uh, if API key is not included, then obviously there's some sort of a helper message. Now, the rest of the work should be fairly easy. You can, of course, get OpenAI API key in there if you want to. If not, then we need uh, some sort of a Grok API key. Uh, so if it's a dev version, I want to make sure this is a cheaper version. Uh, here, we're going to default OpenAI API key. If not, we're going to use the XAI API key. So uh, with that being said, what I need to do here is some sort of a, a main method. So we're going to say uh, define main, and then we need API key, and we need the dev in here. Uh, so what we need to happen is this. Uh, if dev, then we need to do something. And uh, else, uh, then we do the other thing. Uh, so if dev, we're going to hit OpenAI endpoint. Else, we're going to hit rock endpoint. All right? So uh, let's do this one by one. If it's OpenAI, that's the dev version. Uh, then we can do uh, something like this. Is the other scenario if user is willing to enter XAI API key, which as we discussed before, it's more expensive, then this is the direction that we go. Uh, we get the API key here. We can call the agent. We can toss the API key in there. Uh, then this if statement will give us an agent either way. Now. Uh, let's not forget that we need to print out some sort of uh, ACS art right, for the CLI, just to make everything a little bit more prettier. So uh, I can't think of anything better than just print out a giant Grok 4. So what I'm going to do is put it here, I print out a giant Grok 4, just like that. Uh, of course, you can you know, have ChatGPT create this, or you can print it out yourself. Uh, you can have any kind of font you like, right? That's it. Uh, and then in the end, we're going to have some sort of uh, uh, Python code to simply run this in a while loop, right? So while, uh, let me make sure indentation is correct. So while true, uh, what we're going to do is allow some sort of a user input. Uh, we're going to say input. Here, we're going to say user. Uh, and then whenever you see user, that's the place where you typing things, right? Um, and then uh, we're going to check the user message. Uh, if it's exit or quit, uh, we're just going to uh, break the loop, right? We're going to say, hey, goodbye, right? Break the loop. Uh, if not, uh, we're going to come back here. And then what we're going to do is using agent.chat. Uh, and then we're going to throw in user input. Uh, so if it's not exit or quit, what that means is we're going to uh, continue this while loop. We're going to hit the class object. We're going to invoke .chat method. And then we're going to toss in user input. User input here is 
whatever the agent method says, right? So let's go to the agent method. That's the chat method. That's the user message. So in this CLI script, this user input is going to be entered into this method as a user message and as an input argument. Uh, it's going to hit the invoke method of agent executor, and that's managed by Langchain. And then it's going to try to get some sort of response back, right? And uh, that's pretty much it, right? If it hits rate limit, then it's going to break it. It's going to return some sort of error. If not, then let's print out uh, whatever that we got. So uh, that is how the logic works. Very simple, very straightforward. We're going to use Langchain OpenAI to manage the agent flow. Uh, the workflow is in here. If you want to get tools in here, you can. Uh, it's essentially open up the doors if you want to get more tools in there. Uh, but for the time being, uh, we're just going to have everything in large language model, right? And then when we call the API call, uh, the default assumption is uh, depending on the API key that you have. If you have OpenAI, then use OpenAI. If not, if you have XAI, you're going to use Grok4. So that is a script. I think that's pretty much everything I need. And I believe we are ready. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to save this. And I'm going to get the API key in here. And I'm going to try to uh, invoke it. So let me enter my API key here. But that's OK. We're going to delete this after the recording of this video. Here, I made an inference. Uh, it actually says there's no attribute prompt. So definitely there's a mistake here. Let's go back to the code. And let's see what's going on. So we're talking about line 23. Uh, that's referring to this line. And what's happening is I'm referring to this self.prom before it's defined. So that's my bad. Let me move that up here. And I believe that we'll be able to solve the problem. Let's save that. And let's clean this up. Let's do pip install again. And let's update the package. And then we'll rerun everything to see if it's working. There we go. Now it's working. That's awesome. Again, don't worry about this API key. I'm going to delete it after the recording of this video. Now we can talk to it and we can say, how's it going? Tell me a joke. Let's make this bigger so everyone can see. And now we know that this is going to take a while, right? But at least we get an API call, right? Uh, and then obviously I can say, uh, what's the answer of 1 plus 1? Some say two, uh, some say zero. Explain it to me, right? Uh, I don't know how hard of a question it is. It should not be that hard, but let's see what Grok4 is going to tell us. Oh my god, this is kind of a long answer, and I don't even think it finished. But hey, let's see what it says. Us. It says, haha, all right, let's break this down. Your question about one plus one with some saying is two, some saying zero. Sounds like it might be a riddle, a trick question, a reference to different mathematical systems, whatever. Uh, and then the standard answer, right? Section 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2 uh, is purely arithmetic, base 10. That makes sense. Uh, and then trick answer, 1 plus 1 is 0. Um, this is obviously binary, right? Option A is binary. I think it does talk about that. Uh, option 2 is modular. That's fine. That's one explanation. Uh, and then uh, I think it's about to say more, but I believe it finished it right up here. So that's interesting, right? I think it gave a reasonable amount of answer. Um, normal people would have not guessed uh, option A, option B. Uh, obviously, you know, you need to be college graduate or above to be able to know this. So uh, I think this successfully wrapped up uh, this interaction. And we have a successful API call. You can talk to it in your terminal. And this is the package, and this is how you do it. Uh, obviously, I want to uh, give credits to OpenAI, to Langchain, to Grok. Uh, and then last but not least, I want to give credits to uh, Compose.io. So there you go. Hopefully, you like the video. Hopefully, this video shares some light of how you can interact with the latest Grok4 model through a Python notebook, also through command line interface. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.